guys welcome back to another video welcome 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 this video is literally just me coming as i am because you know that's all i can do right now literally just be myself it's so hard it's just so hard because you know like you know a lot of us you know we're taught to have imposter syndrome fake it till you make it fake it till you make it and now like i'm just like okay cool like be yourself oh okay what does that actually mean <laughs> oh, what does that actually mean this video has been highly requested you don't want to know like what it's like post ayahuasca you know what to expect and i'm telling you you're gonna expect the best fucking time of your life you hear me you're gonna expect the best time of your life like <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, I'm living, I'm living my best life. I've been to Miami, I've been to Texas, San Antonio, I've been to, where have I gone? I've been to Atlanta, like I've, I've been going places, literally like, as long as I have a passport, like I'm like, okay, cool. You know, everything else, we can figure it out. Like, what can't you find in this world? Do you know what I mean? Like, what can you not, what can you not actually find in this world? Everything, everything you need, it's just, it's just widely available right so this video is essentially going to be like my post ayahuasca experience i'm going to be talking to you about things that are highly personal because you lot want to know everything and i'm just like mm. i can't tell you obviously everything but i can give you more detail that i'm comfortable with and i think you know probably won't freak out a lot of people because <laughs> anyway you know we're all human we all go through shit so yeah basically that's what this video is going to be about um so stay tuned i decided to come in my candy my candy coated pajamas shout out to a coast my lovely cousin in san antonio texas but um yeah she gave me her pajamas i was like girl you didn't have to do that but yeah she did that so yeah i gotta shout her out so let's get into it i grew up in quite a strict catholic household where a lot of the stuff that you do is pretty much like traditional your feelings like who cares about what you feel like who cares no one cares bruv like just get on with it and do what you need to do like just get whatever you need to get done done if you need to cook like go cook if you need to be going to Dorsten market to go and buy tin tomatoes and, and fish and cow for go like there's just like no sense of emotional care or like welfare and I didn't, I didn't actually know, like, I struggle with emotional neglect, like, like, serious, serious, to the point where, like, I can't feel my feelings. And I'm just like, how does that even work? Like, when I was first, like, going through that journey of, like, understanding how does that even work, not gonna lie, I, I didn't know. I actually didn't know. It was, like, a real enlightenment journey, like, post the ayahuasca experience where, I kind of knew like certain things weren't making sense, but the ayahuasca experience just literally was like a, a big explosion and everything that I'd ever kind of wanted to know, wanted to feel, you know, wanted to experience. I was just kind of having that moment of enlightenment. I will put a link to my ayahuasca video somewhere up here so you can see like obviously what, what, what happened during the experience and stuff. I just honestly realized a lot of things about my childhood. But what happened was like, as soon as I got back from Costa Rica, and my sister was like, oh, I'm going to this event, do you wanna come? And normally I'm the type of babe, I'd be like, okay, finances, you know, cost of clothes, bags, like I'll be checking everything to a T. And nine times out of 10, if it's not making financial sense to me, I'm like, okay, cool, I'm not going. And when I say it doesn't make financial sense to me, I'll be like more on the perspective of it's going to cost too much money and like what for a bit of fun? Is it worth it? Do you know what I mean? And then I sat there to myself, I was like, what goals do I actually have? Like I've got to a point in my life where I've invested so much in my early 20s. Like <laughs> I don't actually don't need to work like that much. I don't need to stress myself. So I was like, yeah, do you know what? Actually, I'm going to come. So I went to BLT Malta, like I lived my best life. I'm going to put some pictures here like this is the most clothes i've ever not worn ha huh? like ever let's go i'm so weird oh my God. I've never been a 
allowed to like just you know I would say it's a whole phase but it's a freedom phase I would say definitely it's a, a freedom phase I've never like had the opportunity to do it so I was living my best life I had no hair like I had no hair I would never be in a situation where I have no hair like I can go by a wig like I had no hair whatsoever I was just like raw like this feels it just felt free and and like a lot of the mentalities or like shackles that I had was bound to me especially as part of like my like the way I was raised and stuff like literally everything was just like breaking melting melting away I just wasn't feeling you know sometimes how I want to feel other things as well were just more along the lines of like my spirituality like why am I going church why am I going church why am I going to church? I don't know. Well, obviously I know, but am I getting the results that I want to get? That's what I, like, I was really starting to ask myself and starting to deep. Am I, no, I'm not. I'm actually not. So, and then I did go through the phase where like, okay, cool. I went to like different churches and stuff like that. But I just was like, what are they telling me that I can't already tell myself, number one? And what am I really like? I don't know what I'm just like what am I doing here I don't feel like speaking in tongues or like I, my body doesn't shake in those Pentecostal churches like you know other people like I don't scream when the pastor touches I don't scream I just stand there like I'm wondering like what's going on but I'm I'm not screaming so so yeah I'm just like just questioning everything 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 and then I just started to deep it like religion is actually what it is defined as and I don't really feel like I can pray to someone who's like white and has like long brown hair and tell him about my problems like I need to be in the driving force about my problems I need to be the one you know who controls and dictates that like no one else I just started, I started to just like re rebel and reject a lot of things and I was just like, raw. You know, I really just need myself. I just need myself. Like I don't actually need any outer, exterior, external forces to come and intervene except for myself and the universe. Like everything I need, I can find here on this planet. I don't have to call no ancestor. I don't have to do any of that. Like I can find it here on this planet. And when I started to deep that, I realised that a lot of the people around me, especially like even parents as well, like they're like they're just winging it. They're literally just winging it, and like they have no idea. And you know, they'll spend time praying, Holy Ghost fire all the time, Holy Ghost fire. But what are you really doing? Like, how is that really changing your life? It like. How is it changing your life? And that's when I started to realise, like, I really need to separate myself from, from people for a while to just, like, have that kind of understanding that I need for myself as Amma so I can just be myself. Like, I don't want to be no imposter. Like, if I'm going for a job interview, if, if I'm modelling, whatever it is I'm doing, like, I'm here because I know that I, like, I, like, I can do it. It's not because, like, my mum told me to go you know, and do stuff like, I just want to do things that I know I want to do because I believe in myself and I know I'm more than capable. And I think, I think that's kind of what Ayahuasca gave me. It just gave me confidence, it gave me strength. It just gave me the ability to know that, you know, no matter what happens, I am okay. And also randomly, like, I'm not scared to die. Like before, like, I remember in my teenage years, I used to like, I used to do this, yeah like this and i will be like checking my my heartbeat my heartbeat and i'll be checking like am i gonna die now or i'll just be panicking thinking raw like i'm gonna get to a point where my body's just gonna give up on me randomly this was in my teens i used to be scared what are you talking about i used to be scared to die what i used to be scared so i wouldn't take any risks like any adventures why am i being adventurous for why like i don't do any of that stuff so i just kind of felt like now i'm like i'm not i'm actually not scared to die like there was a point where we we didn't exist or i did not exist in this form as ammo 
um i did not look like this like no one there was no physical being like me here so really and truly like i there was a time i did not exist and then i'm also deep in you know there's gonna be a time where i'm gonna die like this body is going to like not be here so whether i like it or not that is coming regardless so why would i be scared like surely it's better to educate myself and understand like what death really looks like and what that actually feels like and be comfort comfortable and confident within myself as that person or as that version of Amma. And when I got to that point post ayahuasca, I was just like, raw. I'm not scared to die. I'm not scared to die. I don't worry about anything anymore. I don't worry about anything anymore. And I think that's probably why I like to solve problems. I definitely feel like I'm the type of person who's like, people come to me with problems. You know, they're all like, <laughs> like, I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I just like, just give them the answer and like, just, just let them get on with it. Like, I'm, I know I'm saying like a lot because I just, it's just a big, like, it's just a big awakening, like a proper, proper big awakening. Hi, thank you so much for tuning into my ayahuasca video and following my journey. If you like what you hear and what you see, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment in the comment box below and let me know what you thought. So, yeah, like right now for me, it's just living my best, 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 best life. I bought two designer handbags in the space of like less than two months apart. Am I before? Designer for what? What do you need? Like, why do you need to spend £3,000 on a bag? Like, I cannot, I cannot fathom why people would do that before, but now I'm like, hey, like, let's literally go, like, where? You want to spend 10,000 buck dollars? I'm like, okay, like, let's actually do it, because money comes and money goes, like, it actually does. That is how you make more money. Uh, I say that loosely, I say that loosely, but you have to give in order to receive, so absolutely, like, I'm not sitting here fretting about my next dollar, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. So, or pound or sterling, whatever, whatever you want to call it. That was kind of one of the main things. When I came out of the ayahuasca, so I, went, I told you about the DLT trip that I went to, I had like two major suicidal breakdowns. Like, I wanted to actually jump off the apartment balcony and I was in the apartment by myself. So literally, I can feel an anxiety coming up my chest, coming up my chest, coming up my chest. And normally, the previous version of myself, I would just suppress that shit. What do you mean? Like fully suppression, suppression. Like it was just su suppression, suppression. Yeah, I like, I like, I could not feel my feelings. Like when you actually did that, cause think about it, you know, we are emotional beings, but I'm telling you, I'm numb. I don't, I actually don't feel anything. I always used to talk to my ex about this and he'll look at, he'll look at me like, what is this girl on about? Like, he'll just always be like, what is she on about? I'm like, I can't, I, I, I had to use a chart, like a chart. <laughs> it's not funny, but I can laugh, like, cause obviously it's, this is my story, you know, so. But yeah, a chart. So there's a chart called a feelings wheel and um, it has different like gradients, like feelings, expressions, emotions. I literally, when I feel like my feelings are stuck and I can't like, I can't express myself, I'll have to go on the chart and like literally like work out bit by bit by bit what I'm feeling. And sometimes like my ex will try, like he'll try to talk to me or ask me stuff. I'm like, bruv, like, I, I don't know what I feel. Like I actually don't know. I don't know. It was literally, I was so, so disorientated, just so numb, just so confused. So sorry, back to the, uh, DLT Malta. So when I was there, I was like having an eruption. I was having an eruption. And I think maybe I'd gone out the night before. So I was having an eruption. Then like, literally, it was like I was having, I was just having an attack. I, <clears throat> Some of you might call it a spiritual attack, but I was having an attack. So it just meant that I was like, I was fine one second. The next minute I thought eruption, 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 like, and it's always here. It's always here in my chest. The next minute I'm just screaming, screaming, like, ah, literally that's how it was. It was like that for like five minutes. 
and my mind and my body everything is like jump 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 off the balcony jump up. and it's like telling you to do it now like go and do it now um but obviously you know that that's a part of your consciousness and psyche that um it's basically trying to tell you there's things you're getting rid of there's things that are leaving your system um because while that was happening there was a tiny voice saying something is leaving you and i was like raw like it was so much i was crying i was screaming and i was in my apartment room by myself i had to go lock myself in the bathroom because like i wasn't sure if i was going to go jump or not and i just really wanted like that phase or that situation to just like go away completely and it was like it was just hell. It was just absolute hell. It was absolute hell. It happened again the following week, the following week. And again, and I can feel that it's about to happen. So I quickly have to prepare myself and tell myself, do not do what the, the loudest voice told you to do. Ignore it. Ignore it. Do not go and kill yourself because something is trying to work and move through you. So it happened again. I'll be sitting there. Um, the next minute, the tears, bam. Uh, next minute, the, sh the shock, bam. Next minute, the voice, ah! And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, just screaming. I'm just screaming. Oh. Again, go kill yourself. Go jump. Like, just, your life is not worth living. Literally, like, it's so loud. <laughs> it's so loud. It's louder than my mum shouting at me. It's loud. So I'm thinking, raw, but then again, Amma, the voice will come. It's just the phase. It's going to pass. This is coming out of your system because, um, you know, there's stuff you need to get rid of. So like, I'll tell my friend about it um, and he'll be like, raw, this is amazing. I want to take this drug. Um, it even got to the point where I had to take essential oils because... I was just in a lot of pain. I was in so, so much like mental pain and a lot of trauma. So I had to take essential oils to like soothe my spirit, to soothe my like wounds, just, just so I could feel relaxed. And sometimes when I'll take the essential oil, I'll take the essential oil and then it will be like another attack. <laughs> it will be like another attack and then yeah, I'll just have to like cry. I will have to like hold myself. I will have to nurture myself. Like I'll just have to soothe myself like so much, soothe myself, I'll have to meditate. Then like gradually, when I was going through that period, it was tough, it was tough. And I was like in the middle of a breakup as well. Like, oh, it was, it was absolutely tough. Would I wish this on my worst enemy? Possibly, yeah, I would. From the perspective of like, you know, we all have work to do on ourselves. So like, yo, what are you saying? My music genre kind of widened. I started listening to like more spiritual music, like more healing music, more like motherly nurturing sort of music. Cause I, I crave a lot of motherly uh, nurturing generally. Cause I'm like, I don't, I don't really have that kind of relationship with my mum. So that's, that's an area for me that is like really, really drained or just it's just not present to be fair it's not present so mm. like a lot of that stuff definitely did come to light another area as well is that i started realizing that i just hadn't explored and experienced life as much as i wanted to so it got to the point whereby i in my 20s i'll be thinking oh right like i need to wait for myself to like find a friend who I can travel with um and until i get that friend i'm not going yeah I'm, i'll be like i'm not going anywhere so i'll just sit and just you know kind of wait for the day where you know i'll find a friend how sad do you know what i mean how sad is that and i'll be like oh you know maybe one day i'll find someone who you know i'm in sync with and we can just go traveling together and then after the ayahuasca i was like nah just go <laughs> It just got to point where I said, just go, like, whatever you want to go and do, just go and do it. And I, I, like, went to so many places by myself. Like, I went clubbing by myself. Uh... I went clubbing by myself, like, got my little snatched um, petite handbag, my, my short little mini skirt. I went to the club drunk by myself. 
Okay, not drunk, but you know, like tipsy. By myself. Like who does that? No, who actually does that? Those things I would have like dreamt. I would have dreamt about like, you know, waiting to find a friend and I just realized that everyone's doing what the hell they want to do. So like, why don't you just do what you want to do? And you know, I've always wanted to explore. So why don't you just go and do it? Like no matter what that looks like, just do it. So yeah, like went to the club by myself and I was like, rah, like I'm actually having the best time of my life. <laughs> I'll be having the best, 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 best time of my life. And it's so funny because like, you walk in and you know, the, the vibe is there, the music's there. And then like, obviously, you know, you come into contact with people, so people will see you and they'll be like, rah, who are you here with? I'm like, I'm here by myself. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah. I just, I'm not in a situation where I can just be waiting around. Like, I can't wait for someone to resonate with me. It's better you just go to where the people are that you kind of maybe want to enjoy yourself with and you know meet people so i just like i made bare friends i made so I've, I've got so many friends i've got so many friends and i'm coming from a background where i'm being told constantly why do you need friends who, who, who's your friend like i'm like what like you know we all we're all social beings so like it just got to the point where i'm like i can see the importance of having friendship groups but also I can understand where like my like mum for example may have been coming from and my dad for example but like we are all social beings like we all need people so I, yeah I just made friends like I went to where did I go I went to I went to Soho by myself I went to Manchester I went to, got on a train went to Manchester for the weekend you know stayed in a nice hotel like I will never I will never do those things I'll, I'll never spend almost 300 pounds a night in a hotel like by myself i will never do those things i was like but you know what like you can afford it just go because i went to manchester by myself like i went yeah i went to the clubs i met people some of the people i'm still even in contact with today like we still talk on the phone like and it's just people who i feel are open-minded open people that's one thing also as well i realized I can't be around people who like to keep secrets. I can't be around people who like to lie. I just, I don't know how to do it because I'm a, I'm a cancer as well. So like, we're very sensitive people, very, very sensitive people. So when you're lying, like when you're lying to us, we know, we already know that's the thing. But like, it just depends if we feel like we want to talk to you about it or not. So for me, it's just like, I can't, I can't, I cannot, I cannot. Like, I, I can deal with, like, small white lies, but, like, when they're serious life-changing lies, like, you know, I am president of Nigeria, for example, and you know you're not, like, you're not. Like, those sort of lies, like, for me, it's just, that's, I don't know if that's also that imposter syndrome that I'm just feeling like is leaving my body as well. Like, yeah, be who you want to be, but just, like, just be realistic. That is not going to happen anytime soon are you really going to be present of nigeria like tomorrow that's not going to happen yeah so it's just like certain things like that like you know when people are lying to me like i can clearly tell so yeah i just be like mm, do i want to confront you or not can i be bothered or not like or should i just distance myself from you like so it'll be one of those kind of situations and then also like i did mention about like the relationship with my mum and it just got to the point where i just realized like how much she controlled me and I know this potentially could have been from a place of love, but for me, it is like suffocating. It is, it is suppression. It is depression. It is oppression. Like every eshin is, is just like all of that in one go. So it just got to the point where I just had to like rebel, just, just like full hardcore rebel. And obviously I knew this time, like there's no way she can beat me or anything like that. So, you know, it's like, what are you gonna do really what shout at me okay cool like you've been doing that already sort of thing so yeah it just got to the point where i was like you know what just rebel 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 so i rebelled i rebelled i rebelled i rebelled then it got to the point where she just didn't know what to do and that's when i realized that's when i actually realized and i told her and i was just like to her you like you're going to learn how to deal with me like you're going to learn how to treat me how i want to be treated if you're not going to do that, I am literally going to ignore you. I'm going to stop talking to you. And it, it just got to the point now where like, 
I feel like she's just kind of, she doesn't know what to do. <laughs> and she's kind of in a corner where she's just trying to like gently, you know, approach me from different angles just to kind of see, you know, how will I respond or like how will I react and stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. Like now you're actually getting that, you know, it's not one size fits all. I am who I am and I'm going to be treated the way I want to be treated. If you're not going to treat me the way I want to be treated, like it's absolutely fine it's absolutely fine so it's just like things like that like you know she's just realizing she can't control me and even when i would talk about the fact that you're controlling me she would tell me things like oh it's not controlling and i'm like okay cool this is where the man manipulation comes in now because if you're stopping someone from doing what they want to do and you're telling them to do things like x or y or z that's control like that's actually control so i just yeah i just rebel i rebel and I think she's slowly, slowly starting to see, you know, um, where I'm coming from. It's so slow. It is really, really slow. It's really, really slow. It's working. It's definitely working. And the last thing I'd also say about my ayahuasca experience is that like, the elasticity in my brain is, is so much now. Like, I have a lot of time to listen to people. I have a lot of time to like, you know, assess situations from a different perspective. But like be in the situation and also take myself out of the situation and kind of see what is going on. Like what energies am I facing and dealing with versus like, you know, what the outcome could be. Whereas before it would just be like Amma's way, like everything leads to Amma's way. And if it's not Amma's way, like I'm cutting you off. Like I'm actually cutting you off. But now like with the ayahuasca, I'm actually like able to listen to different people and actually just go deeper, go deeper in conversation, go deeper in relationships. Like I'm just having meaningful conversations that I thought are progressive. And like, I'm actually now meeting people who I thought are more in my vibration, more my energy where, you know, we, we want to be open-minded. We want to talk about trauma. We want to talk about what our parents did to us that was wild that doesn't make sense but yet you know we're still trying to figure it out we want a better relationship with our parents like we, we want better friendships you know we want to increase our uh tax brackets you know we, we want to go on the nice holidays and stay in expensive hotels you know we want to learn like i'm actually meeting people now who i thought are more my vibration and that for me is priceless so in terms of ayahuasca and you know taking it i get like people who call me today and they're like oh yo can you tell me a bit more about your ayahuasca experience and stuff like that and i'm like i'm absolutely open to like talking to people but i've realized also like some people just don't want to know like they don't like they don't want to know some people just like don't want to be disrupted they don't want to be in situations where they feel like you're taking them out of their reality. As much as their life they know is shit, like they just wanna be in the shit life that they're in and they don't want any form of growth. Like they don't wanna know. And I always used to struggle and I used to be like, right, like, how can you not wanna improve yourself? Like, how can you not wanna grow? You know, how can you not wanna, how? Just how can you not want to be a better version of yourself? Like, you know, if you're earning 20k, like, why would you want to go to the point where you're earning 30k? You know, like, if you're earning 30k, why would you want to get to the point where you're earning 50? Or like, you know, if you're always dating men that cheat on you, why would you want to get to a point where you meet a man that respects you for you? Like, you know, like, why? Why don't... And I've realised people just don't want to do the work. Some people just do not want to do the work. They don't want to be disrupted spiritually. They don't want to be disrupted on a universal level. And that's when I start to realise, oh you know, you're kind of broken and, and damaged, which we all are wounded to some extent, but I can see the extent of, you know, where you're at. And I just leave those people alone now. Like I don't, I don't try and, I wouldn't say fix, but I don't try and like meddle in that realm of, you know, I'm in this toxic, chaotic circle. This is always happening. My life, my life, my life. Oh, my life, my life, my life. And, <laughs> and you know, they don't want to do anything about it. I've been there, so I kind of get it, but at the same time, I don't, like, I don't, I don't want to be there. Sorry, I don't want to be there. So that, that really is kind of the main things that I would say I've experienced since I've done the whole ayahuasca experience. 
I mean, I feel like this is an obvious answer that I'm going to give to this question. But if anybody's like, should I do it? Yes. Like, yes, definitely go and do it. I feel like, I feel like if you are looking for answers and if you keep getting yourself in certain situations, you know, like go and do it. Like go and just break any addiction, any habit that you know is just causing you to decline and recline in life. Like go and do it seriously go and do it like go and do it i went to do it at rave mia um i'll put the details here if you decide to go please recommend me my name is hammer um ama i really need to stop doing that accent but yeah at ama amadi recommend that i told you to go and do it you're just gonna see so much change like so much transformation everything's just gonna make sense Trust me, everything is going to make sense. And I know people go again. You know, there's some people that have been like two, three times. Oh my God. I need to do a video with this guy, actually. I need to do a video with Ricardo. I actually need to do a video with Ricardo. Yeah, I'm going to be sharing more experiences. I'm definitely going to be sharing more experiences. But yeah, so much is like happening for me in the next few months, the next three to six months. And I'm so excited for all this transformation that I'm going to be going through. I'm really, really excited. I'm very, very happy. The one thing I would say though is like, I do feel like it would be nice to share this journey with like someone who I care like really, really deeply about in terms of like a partner and stuff like that. It would be nice to go on this journey with, with someone. But outside of that, like my life is, my life is, is, is great like i'm i'm so so happy like i can genuinely wake up in the morning and i'm like raw i ask myself i'm like amma sometimes i talk to my inner child and like little amma how do you feel like how do you actually feel that i feel happy <laughs> i actually feel happy so yeah i will definitely recommend it if you've got any questions feel free to put them in the comments box below like i'm not more, i'm not sure what much more i can say if you've got any specific questions yeah feel free to put them in the comments box below please subscribe to my youtube channel please like this video and i will see you guys again soon